Chapter 14, Light in the Dark. Ooh, pretty. General Iron, it is kind of pretty. In position. Oh, now you care. It's time to take back the physical world. Fire! That's not gonna cut it. No, not the Aang statue. Now it's personal. They're over here! I'm so confused about what's gonna happen with Korra now because she lost the connection to the past avatars, it seems. And also, Rava was defeated. So what does that mean for her and her powers? I have so many questions and I'm really wondering how they're gonna resolve this. Thank goodness you're all okay. Did you find Janora? I was able to rescue her soul, but she wasn't ready to return to her body yet. Yeah, where is she? I thought she went to help Korra, but... Were you able to stop Unalak and Vatu? Nope. No. Vatu won. I'm too young to live through 10,000 years of darkness. Korra, can't you talk to one of your past lives or something? About that. He destroyed my connection to the past avatars, too. If that's true, then... The cycle is over. I'm the last avatar. I'm so sorry, Tenzin. Right. <laughs> oh, that sucks for everyone. But there's gotta be a way. She needs you now, more than ever. How are they gonna deal with this? Well, Rava still exists and will always exist. There's gotta be a way to restore the connection, no? We're going down! Hell yeah. Time for Lynn to like show up this season. I've been waiting. Good start, saving the president. <laughs> Please get this guy a raise. Is there anything he won't comment on? As someone who does commentary, uh, respect, mad respect for this guy. If we ever reach the apocalypse, I'll be sure to do a video on it. I have a lot of opinions about the end of the world. I can tell you that much. Is that Varric? Ah, uh, I missed you, man. I missed you. It's been too long. Julie. Uh oh. Julie, commence Operation Winged Freedom. Where the world sees chaos, Varric sees opportunity. I bet Varric has something he could sell Vatu. Varric's the kind of guy who can make a deal with the devil and somehow win. The other avatars may not be able to help you anymore, but perhaps I can. No one can help me now. I know I haven't been the best mentor to you, but I realized it was because I had a lot of spiritual growth to do myself. That's what I've been saying. <laughs> But yeah, he did it. I am ready for Tenzin at his best. There may still be a way for you to stop Vatu. How? Let go of your attachment to who you think you are mm. and connect with your inner spirit. Haven't you heard anything I said? Rava is gone. That's so cool to think about it that way. Korra's big obstacle is similar to Tenzin's big obstacle. I hadn't thought about that. Attachment to some image that's kind of blocking them from being more than that you know, in a way. Actually, I think it's fine that she identifies as being the Avatar. It's just that she has a very specific vision for what that means. And so there are blind spots for her in that. But now that Tenzin's been there and back, it seems like he sees things a little bit more clearly. It's not so much about following tradition blindly and more about finding actual meaningful solutions to the problem that they're having. Korra, the most powerful thing about you is not the spirit of Rava, but your own inner spirit. You have always been strong, unyielding, and fearless. Mm -hmm. Avatar Wan. He became a legend because of who he was, not what he was. He wasn't defined by Rava any more than you are. Mm. So I don't know where they're going with this yet, but personally, I really like that speech and that message. This is a weird season in terms of the Avatar and what it means. And so far, there's been a lot of contention about like, was it a good thing or a bad thing to dive that deeply into the past? I definitely see both sides of it. And I think that it was unnecessary to go this far into detail about the Avatar and its origins, because at some point you just have to take things on faith, right? But for me personally, as someone who is looking for value, personal value from media, it does fulfill something I want. and. Tenzin, I think, kind of explained my feelings a little bit because the Avatar as a law of nature is less impactful to me and less meaningful than the Avatar as a symbol of a very high form of humanity. Heroism, strong values, selflessness, strength, capability, reliability, balance. A good hero is a reminder of a higher form of living for ourselves. So what I like about Tenzin's speech there is that he's 
grounding the avatar in very human things rather than having it rely solely on the technicalities of some form of magic. Maybe they could have done it a little bit better this season and been more clear about themes, but I think that was kind of revealing about the way that the creators were thinking about this season and what it, what purpose it serves. Although I could be wrong. Don't bend the elements, but the energy within yourself. Wow, that's a tall order. Thank you for not giving up on me. I'm proud of you. Good teacher Tenzin. You're the man, Tenzin. I love you. If you and Vatu have the same fight every 10,000 years, why hasn't one of you destroyed the other? He cannot destroy light any more than I can destroy darkness. Right. One cannot exist without the other. Find the yeah. light in the dark. That's beautiful. Wow, look at this. This is interesting. This is like Korra entering like the sub-spiritual world, right? Like she's already in the spiritual world, but this is deeper than that. This is almost like uh, Aang with Guru Patik, right? There's like that extra strata of just being. Maybe that's the realm of energy that, you know, that they're referring to. Something about that was really nice. She's just pure light. Oh, she's gigantic. <laughs> it's kind of scary. Beautiful and scary. Uh... <laughs> what did you say to her exactly? <laughs> yeah. Kind of surprising. Cool though. So yeah, seeing that, I really think that's what they're going for. I think they're really attempting to break out of the just technical elements of the Avatar and make it somehow more symbolic. Whether or not that works is a different story. I guess it just depends on your perspective and what you want out of the show. I'm waiting to see if they're going to reestablish the connection to the past Avatars because I think that would be a big deal for some people. Because that definitely removes like a big part of what the previous show and this show itself have leaned on. Are they going to restore it or is this just the new normal? I am Big Blue Cora. <laughs> I mean, at the very least, we get two giant things battling, so, you know, can't complain. <laughs> the classic two colored light beam. <laughs> I don't know why it's so funny. Wow, flying knee to the face. Remember that time I need chaos in the jaw? If there's one thing I know about universal forces, the best way to defeat them is by punching them as hard as you can. You're looking for something that is gone. She looking for light? Rava has been destroyed. And soon you will be too. You can't destroy it. It's just the law of the universe. Oh, they're defending her physical body. That's a nice shot. That's great. I just realized they have all four elements. That's cool. Yes! Nice. I love it. Last minute save. Leave my bullet alone! I am so done with spirits. <laughs> yeah, me too, kind of, actually. I will be the one true avatar. Janora! Let me see! <gasps> be careful, sweetie! I think we're past that. Janora, top tier, confirmed. No! Bravo! The punching. Are they going to reconnect? No! Go in peace. We must return to the spirit world so we can fuse once again. What exactly did Janora do? My guess is that just she had pure spirit, good spirit, and so she was able to create it or bring it out of 
Flatu, and that allowed Korra to locate the goodness or the light in the darkness and extract it. Is there more to it than that? Like, is there a lost episode for Jinora? Did she do something specific? Let me know what I'm missing about that. I'm just gonna stay like this <laughs> for the rest of my life. This is the new avatar. Jinora is low-key the strongest one. I'll see you soon, Dad. What? Also, there's more to her journey. Oh, okay. She's she's back. Gotcha. They're all right. Cora saved the world. I mean, you played a big part in that. Don't sell yourself short. Our avatar spirit has returned. What about the connection? I just wish Varric had been here to film it. It would have been the greatest mover ever. After. The Nuck Tuck Chronicles, of course. Yeah, close second. I'm sorry about your father. It seems Cousin Cora is under the impression we are saddened by our father's demise. In the end, he became a deplorable man. I feel like it would have been better for them to have some emotion about their father. Although maybe they do and they're just not expressing it. So how about you move to Republic City with me? I will not be joining you, Bolin. Desna and I must return home. You have to rebuild. You will always hold a special place in the organ that pumps my blood. The liver? I will remember you fondly. My turtle duck. I missed you, little buddy. Can we keep him, Mom, please? Are you also reconnected to your past lives? That's the question. No. Mm. I think that link is gone forever. Why don't you close the portals and we'll go home? So I can see why people may have been upset about that, especially if that's something they really enjoyed about previous shows. I know a lot of fans get a really deep sense of satisfaction from the whole avatar connection thing and getting advice from the avatars. So if that's something that you really like, I can understand why that would be very upsetting. Especially if it doesn't seem necessary. Like, she's still the avatar, that cycle hasn't been broken, so why can't she also keep the connection with the avatars of the past? Maybe I shouldn't. What do you mean? What if Unalop was right when he said the avatar shouldn't be a bridge between the two worlds? What if Avatar Wan made a mistake when he closed the portals? He did exile them. There is nothing else I can teach you. Whatever your decision, I support you. Yeah, that's interesting. Wan started this whole thing by meddling in the spirit world. And then the solution to that was total order. In the name of balance, right, just complete separation between the spirit world and the human world. But the reaction to that, in a sense, was a chaotic pushback. Chaos was sort of growing silently. It seems to have been a temporary solution at best. So maybe it would actually be more balanced if the Avatar stepped back and let the chaos and order, the peace and, and whatever, the spirit world and the human world sort of play themselves out naturally. And maybe it's better for the Avatar to be more a defender when things arise rather than trying to establish and enforce a certain state on the world. Can we talk? Can we talk about the crazy romance this season? I wanted to tell you about that fight we had. You broke my desk. I, I broke up with you. I remember. Oh, slick. I think we both know that this doesn't work. You're right. It's over. For real this time. I don't think anybody really cares. <laughs> Let's be honest. Right, nothing says break up like a kiss. And I'll always love you. There are more important things right now, like the universe. What is happening with it? Where did he come from? You want a hug? <laughs> I've realized that even though we should learn from those who came before us, we must also forge our own path. Hmm. So that is why I've decided to keep the portals open. Humans can now physically enter the spirit world and spirits will be free to roam our world. This is a huge game changer. My mission will always be to use Rava's light spirit to guide the world toward peace and balance. We are entering a new age. Wow. I like that way more than I thought I was going to. There's a lot of really interesting things happening. All right, so first of all, the big elephant in the room, major changes to the avatar thing. I think it really just comes down to personal preference. For me, the connection to the avatars of the past, uh, looking for guidance, it was never like one of my top parts of the show. In fact, if you guys have been following me for a while, you know I've been very critical of the past avatars as guides. 
And so I'm not sure it's a huge loss. My only complaint with it really, if, if I have one, is that it just seems unnecessary. I think that there are really great thematic themes happening here that you don't need to sever connections to accomplish. Some of the things I really love about the experience Korra had at the end of the season are not being bound by systems and instead operating from who you really are. The leaving behind of some of the more technical elements of the avatar and making it more personal, more about good qualities of a hero that we can all look up to. The finding of the light in the darkness I think is really cool even though it's used often because I think it's real. Like Iroh said, if you look for the light you'll find it and if you look for the dark you'll find that too. But all those things do not necessarily require throwing away the connection to the past avatars. The only thing I can think of symbolically for removing the connection to the past avatars is like forging your own way. But I think you can forge your way even without doing that. I mean, part of balance is listening to the past and making your own future at the same time. So overall though, these last few episodes really helped me see that they were trying to build something. There were a handful of elements that seemed disconnected, but now I see that they were all coming together for that purpose. For example, like Tenzin's journey, I saw that as a subplot, but Tenzin's journey was actually really important because it's also Korra's journey, which is the journey to find out who you really are and self-actualize in the midst of incredible pressure and expectations placed on you, both from society and from yourself. The revelation for Korra at the end is that it's not about being this figure, but it's about finding truth for herself. Another thing that now looks more intentional is the fact that one created this whole cycle through meddling in affairs. And him doing that created a cycle where he had to overcompensate and become the avatar to, to reestablish balance. But that still wasn't true balance. It was just enforced order. What Korra did is kind of vent the pressure a little bit by allowing things just to be as they are. I need more time to reflect on it overall, but my gut feeling about season two is that people don't give it enough credit. I think that there's a lot of interesting narrative stuff happening. And I take great inspiration from some of the things like Tenzin's journey I find incredibly powerful. And I love Janora's pure of heart this and I like Korra reevaluating herself and her role. It's always good. It's always useful for me to think about that. I love Bolin's transformation, even though that was kind of a minor point. I'm a little bit surprised by the hate this gets. Like, is it the best season of the Avatar universe? Maybe not. Is it great? I think, yeah, I think it's phenomenal. I, I enjoyed it quite a bit and I personally got a lot out of it. I think it really all comes down to your lens when watching the show. I think some people really like just the structure of the Avatar universe and for that reason I can see why this would not be the best season. But I think just in terms of TV and story and characters and interesting themes, even if they're not executed perfectly, I think there's a lot here. This season also brought us Varric, which I'm thrilled with. Music is great as always for Korra. The action was also top notch. I think you really can't ask for more in that department. And now to balance the scales, things I didn't like about the show or the season are certain characters felt underutilized. Asami just got the terrible end of the stick in this season. Lin, besides rescuing the president, didn't do much. The love triangle is not super interesting. I've seen better, especially from these guys. And then I think it would have maybe been better if they were just clearer on how they were representing Rava and Vatu. Although the last two episodes kind of made me feel a little bit better about that and pushed me back towards my original thesis a little bit. But still, I think it could have been a little sharper. It could have been a little more focused. But yeah, so that's season two, the least popular season, <laughs> which I ended up liking anyway. Thank you to everyone for following this so far. A lot of people were like, I'm not going to watch you watch season two, but I appreciate those who joined for the journey. Whether or not it's the best season, I think there were some great things here and I had a lot of fun doing this. And the good news for all the people who don't like season two is that season three starts tomorrow. And last thing before we go, I got to give a very special shout out to everybody who signed up for the Goodwin clan on Patreon. I'm still blown away every day by the amount of support you guys give me. Thank you so much. Special shout out goes to Lorenzo, Hambone Kablui, Jack Ellis Coates, Ronnie St. Laurent, Mick Backer, and Devin, thanks to you guys and to all the people who support me on Patreon, everybody who supports the YouTube videos. Couldn't possibly do this without you. It's you guys who make this so much fun and so great. So thank you again. I've been a little bit busier than normal trying to get adjusted to the new schedule and everything. So if I haven't been as responsive, I apologize. That'll get better going forward. It gets easier and easier to do this with support. We're getting ever closer to the point where I can do more uploads. I'm hoping to do five a day on YouTube in October. I'm really looking forward to starting season three. So I'll see you tomorrow for episode one.